Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoterica and our continuing series on the Mr. FPGA board, comparing it against original hardware and teaching you guys how to use each individual core in the best way possible. And today we're going to be taking a look at the Sega Genesis or Mega Drive exclusively because the Mr. does work for Sega CD or Mega CD games as well, but the core is different and it operates in different ways. So we're going to be exclusively doing a video on the Genesis and then we will do another one in the future on the Sega CD. Before we get too far involved, you can do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like, subscribe, ring that notification bell, definitely helps us out and if you feel so inclined we got a patreon link down there as well but the nice thing about the sega cdx is that it's the smallest version of a sega genesis and a sega cd built into one and unless you have to open it up and work on it it's the best piece of hardware to have but the nice thing about the mister is that it has both a genesis or mega drive core as well as a sega cd or mega cd core so the mister will operate in the same manner that the sega cdx will or any of the other devices that sega put out and the great thing about the cdx is that we're going to be able to compare it with RGB video out. Now the Mr. will do RGB as well via the VGA port or you can use HDMI so you do have options but compared to the Neo Geo comparison video where I had to use a lesser video signal this is going to be as close to accurate as we can get. Now the one thing is, you'll see the Sega Genesis pad up there. It is normally a three button, but you can get a six button, but A, B, and C are all in a line, where the Switch controller, they are not. So we can get it pretty close to accurate, but what I've been finding out with these Mr. Cores is my number one complaint about them is that they are hard to control because if you're used to this hardware, if you grew up on it, things are not in the places that they need to be button wise. And we'll be working on fixing that in a new video coming up shortly. But getting right into the Mr. Menu, we're going to go ahead and load up the Sega Genesis Core, and I'll give you guys a little tour around the menu options and how to get everything set up. So you'll see here there's different file extensions and regions, and what you'll find is if you don't use the right option right here, you're going to get a notice that this cartridge or ROM is not compatible with the region. So if you go over to Auto Region and use File Extension and try to load it up again, we'll see what happens. I didn't have any issues on the Super Nintendo with regions, but with the Sega Genesis, it does like to give you region errors. So play around with that Auto Region to see what happens. You'll see again, we've selected the wrong option. So if you go to Auto Region and use Header and then load the file up from there, it will launch and it will be in the correct region. So if you're getting issues with region games not loading up, if you're getting error messages, play around with that option until you get it to load because it definitely will, no issues whatsoever. You just need to play with it a little bit more than other cores. And don't forget as well, you always want to define your buttons for each individual core. That way everything is set up and ready to run. If you don't define your buttons, they might not be in the places you want versus where you defined them off the Mr. Main menu. So I always redefine my buttons for each individual core. But taking a look at some of the options for video, we have original and full screen. I don't know who would use full screen, but you can. You can do a corrected aspect ratio, and then you have different filters to make it look better. I leave these all original and off. It's totally up to you what you want to do, but that is your option. And you'll see border as well. That's part of the RGB out on an original Genesis. There is a border around, and you can put composite blend on as well if you want. Like I said, I leave all of these options as is, and you'll see here that when I load up the core, we're playing Streets of Rage 2 here, everything looks great on the mister, and then as soon as we transition over to the Genesis version, everything also looks perfect. I can't tell the difference outside of knowing which file headers there are and getting those RGB dots at the bottom. But taking a look at the intro sequence side by side, on the left is the Mr. and on the right is the Genesis, and they look absolutely identical. The audio and waveforms match as well, but listen to the difference in audio quality and I'll be back in about five seconds. So you can definitely hear the Mister is doing an excellent job with the Genesis audio. With Streets of Rage 2 and a lot of emulators, the sound does not sound right. And you'll see at the bottom left hand corner, I'm telling you whether you're viewing the Mister footage or off my CDX. But I would say everything sounds identical. The only difference is the HDMI signal is digital, where the RGB signal is going to be analog. So there is a little bit of feedback. My biggest thing is that I prefer the colors off of my CDX with RGB more than I do the Mister. That is personal preference. I would just say that the vibrancy of the Mister is not exactly as pleasing to my eye, but that might be completely subjective. I've been using a Frame Meister 
and my CDX with RGB for the longest time, it may just be what I prefer. But even moving inside here, you'll see that kind of rainbow effect on that pillar there. And if we go right back over to the Sega Genesis version, captured on real hardware, visually it does look identical. So it is almost impossible to tell any differences between these two games. That is how close to accurate they truly are. And in the next scene here, we're going to pause on the exact same frame and take a look at the dithering effects for that transparency. And honestly, I still can't tell a difference. I do think the RGB being an analog signal makes it look a little bit more pleasing to the eye, but honestly, the Mister is doing an excellent job. Now moving on to Rocket Knight Adventure, this is going to be the Mr. Intro, and then we're going to move directly into the Sega Genesis original cartridge and compare the two. And again, everything is frame accurate. When I put the frames together on that sword when it comes out of the sheath, that almost shinging noise, and match everything else up, it is frame to frame perfect. All the screen transitions work exactly the same, and in the next scene, just listen and compare. You can definitely hear that there is a slight tonal difference, but I'm pretty sure that's just down to the analog versus HDMI signal. But everything on the waveform does match up perfectly. Now playing on the Mister, everything looks great. I don't mind the vibrancy of the colors as much on the Mister compared to the Sega Genesis with RGB out. And you will see that those borders do appear when you're using RGB, and that is what you can turn on in the menu. It's just an artifact of what it used to look like. But even the slowdown is in the exact right places that it should be for Rocket Knight Adventure. It matches great. Now if I do have one complaint, and it is just a small one, it's the controller setup. I need to find a three button controller for the mister, because on the right in the Genesis version, I'm able to stun lock the second stage of the boss like I normally am. On the mister, I was not able to control the game as well. It's not due to latency, it's just due to the buttons being in the wrong situations. So while this is extremely accurate from an emulation standpoint, from a button press standpoint, I need to do something better. But as far as Rocket Knight Adventure on the Mister is concerned, other than the colors being a little bit more vibrant, it is near if not perfectly identical. Now taking a look at something that everyone's going to know, we're going to take a look at Sonic 3 or Sonic and & Knuckles. And right now we're taking a look at the Sega version running on RGB from my CDX, and then we're going to transition over to the Mister version as close to cutting perfectly as possible. And again, with a little bit of a spoiler alert, I could not see any difference difference in this game outside of slight color differences between RGB and HDMI, and that's just part of the way that the signals are processed. You'll see here that on the Mister it is much more colorful, but the sound is perfect, everything plays exactly like I remember this game playing, and of course this is one of the games that I played a ton growing up, so I am super familiar with it. And what I'm learning about the Genesis Core on the Mister is that it if it isn't perfect, it is so near to perfect that I cannot tell any difference whatsoever. Every game I threw at it that I could compare against original hardware was exactly how I remember it. And luckily with the Mister and the HDMI output, with my CDX, I need a SCART cable, I need a converter, I need a frame meister, and I need a capture card. So as far as devices are concerned, there's a much less amount of wires going on with the mister and that's what i'm finding with this little board system is that it's a much easier way to handle playing some retro systems for sure and like i said with sonic 3 it plays exactly how i remember it now again i do slightly prefer the muted colors of the rgb signal because i don't remember on a crt tv these games being as vibrant as you see here but it is just complete subjectivity you may like these colors more i'm not saying they're wrong i'm just saying that they're slightly different but again, my one issue with this core was that I didn't like using the Switch Pro controller with it, and that is not a core complaint. And I'm definitely going to do an episode talking about the best control setups that you can use for each individual core to give you the most accurate gameplay experience possible compared to the original hardware and the controllers that would have come with that. But you'll see here again, the oranges are just a little less orange and the browns a little more brown. To me, it just looks correct. But to you, you might have a completely different opinion. So leave a comment down below and you tell me what you think. But I'm moving into one more game just to check it out. We're going to be talking about Splatterhouse 2. This is one of my favorite games of all time. And I'll let you just listen to a little bit of the intro and how good the music sounds on the mister. And I will be back in just a second. I 
I've listened to that intro song so many times as I used to rent this game as a kid constantly, and I've owned it as an adult for a very long time. And I really like the Mister's audio output because on the Sega CDX with that SCART cable RGB, there's a little bit of ground hum in the signal, and some Genesis make that hum where you'll see the Mister does not. So audio-wise, I think it is really amazing. And I will say though, the video signal you have to remember that developers chose color palettes and designs because they were supposed to be on composite TVs, and sometimes they were hiding things with that bad signal and I just like the original Genesis colorscape ever so slightly more. It's not to say that the mister is incorrect, it might just be so clean that it doesn't look right to me. Because if we take a look at them side by side in just a moment, I'll explain more why. It is the tiniest of complaints, but if I am going to compare these cores to the original hardware, I do need to point out where I think they do differ. Which is to say that they're probably 99.9% .9 identical, but there is that slight difference in the color. And you'll see it right here when we put them side by side. On the left, I just think it's a little too colorful colorful and a little too vibrant. We're on the right off the CDX. Those colors are what I remember Splatterhouse looking like. So to me, I actually prefer the image ever so slightly on the right, but that's something you could definitely remedy with your TV settings and your mister hooked up. You may think that the Mr. version does look better than the Genesis version to your eye, and if that's the case, you need to do absolutely nothing to make it look better. But as Aladdin plays over the end here, I will give you my final verdict on the Sega Genesis or Mega Drive core for Mr. If there is any difference to original hardware, I cannot tell. The only difference I see is in the color vibrancy, and that is just down to HDMI versus analog signals. But if you're thinking about getting into Genesis, if you want to play the best version possible and you don't want to have a bunch of equipment and original hardware around, the Mr. Core is an absolutely outstanding replacement for original Genesis hardware. The only thing I need to fix is getting a controller with the right button inputs. Short of that, if you have any questions or comments, I'll leave them down below. I'm not going to sell my CDX or Genesis games, but I certainly will be using my Mr. a lot to play them. But as I mentioned earlier in the video, if you could do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like, subscribe, ring that notification bell, definitely helps us out, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.